Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. File a false restraining order against me and threaten to kill me. Okay, let's dance. I couldn't make it all the way to the end because I was too tired. Cast, I don't use abbreviations since I want the reader to be able to figure it out. I was the subject of a false restraining order against me by my now ex-wife a few years ago. She was living in another state with her boyfriend at the time. We were in the process of divorcing, and she had calculated that obtaining a fake restraining order would be an excellent way to get total control over the car I had purchased for myself. Our car was only accessible by a single key, which she had both in her possession and in her possession. This will be critical in the future. I was enraged that she had purposefully filed a fraudulent restraining order, and after being served with it, I filed an appeal and a request for a hearing as soon as possible. I phoned my place of employment and demanded that they reveal all of my Department of Transportation, GPS records, as well as corporate internal vehicle tracker data, which they agreed to do. Aside from that, I printed out my own GPS tracking data from the navigation device I was using while traveling. So. Not only did I have official documents that indicated exactly where I was, but I also had official records that showed exactly where I was, or, maybe more importantly, it was not. Aside from that, I received two very accurate system information displays that displayed my actual speed and cardinal direction, among other pertinent information. Intervals of 2 minutes and 30 seconds were recorded. In order to assist clarify the entire scope of the circumstances and present my side of the appeal in front of the court-slash-judge, I produced a three-page testimony that I read in front of them. After over 30 days, I have come to the conclusion that if the case is adjourned and I exited the courthouse, there is a chance that I will be able to reach my vehicle before my ex-spouse. With this in mind, I made the decision to contact the dealership where I purchased the vehicle and request a duplicate key. Knowing that we only had one key when we purchased the car, I knew she wouldn't be expecting me to be able to drive away in it. So. Let's fast forward a few days to the scheduled court appearance. For this court judgment appeal, I had driven across two states with all of my paperwork, written documentation, and the key to my vehicle in tow to be there. I arrive at the hearing site around four hours before the scheduled start time and excitedly anticipate the wonderful moment. The bad news is that it was a colossal disappointment. She couldn't show up for work. The court reached a speedy decision in my favor, and the restraining order was immediately revoked. The judge then asked if I had anything further to say to the court, and if I didn't, he excused me from the proceedings. As a result, I asked politely, Me, Your Honor, I believe the restraining order slash PPO has been lifted. Yes, ma'am, the judge says. So, am I able to reclaim my car at this time? Judge, ma'am, as the judge of this courtroom, I am unable to provide you legal advice. Me, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Judge, however, if you locate a seat in the rear of my courtroom, my secretary will assist you. A court reporter, I'm not sure what the phrase is, will provide you a written order of dismissal for the restraining order slash PPO. It is advisable to have this evidence on you if you are questioned by police authorities for any reason about property or contact, because the order cancellation may not enter the police system until after the end of business today. The judge's statement had been framed in such a manner that it was evident what she was trying to say. She couldn't tell me whether I was good to recover my car, but she was taking the time to present me with the documents that allowed me the legal right to do so. So I sat down, and after approximately 10 minutes, the court employee in charge of drafting and printing the papers obtained the judge's signature on it and handed it to me. The judge shouted out to me as I was about to leave the courtroom, as I was putting it in my binder with other documentation. Mrs. BTK216 is the judge. Me, somewhat surprised, yes, your honor. Judge, with a sly grin, good luck. Now I had to devise a strategy. Because my ex-wife was not present at the court sessions, neither was my automobile. I knew where her boyfriend's slash parents' boyfriends lived, because it was on the list of protected properties in the first restraining order, and she had left a notepad with it scribbled on it when she originally departed to be with the man. I decided to use Uber to go to the location and see whether the car was still there. I asked that the Uber driver wait for me at the location after dropping me off, giving her a brief synopsis of my circumstances and plan, to ensure that I had a witness there for the anticipated recovery of my car. Simply put, to guarantee 
that no fraudulent charges of fake activity during the vehicle's retrieval have a figurative leg to stand on in court. The woman Uber driver agreed and sympathized with my situation. She even went so far as to provide me with her personal contact information in case I needed her for a future court appearance. The car was there when I arrived at the location I had provided. The Uber woman waited until I had obtained the car, left the grounds, and then followed me for approximately two miles to ensure that I had totally exited the property, and then she continued on her route. Bless that woman, she was a saint, so I get about a half hour away, and my phone calls. When I answered the phone, it was my ex-boyfriend, wife's, and as you might expect, he was not pleased. He rambled off many vulgarities and other random offensive remarks, which I completely ignored. Then he made a huge, dumb error. If I ever see you again, here or in a place, I will blow your head off, he warned. I'm now a -m 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 veteran. Threats to my life do not sit well with me. I was angry at him, I was angry at her. And now I've been given a gift-wrapped method of total and utter catastrophic vengeance. I hung up with him right away and contacted 911 to report a verbal threat on my life. I went to the parking lot at a nearby large box store to meet the responding police, and I didn't leave until I received a case number, the accompanying written statement, and the reporting officer's identity information. I returned to my home state, and the following Monday, all of this happened on a Friday, I went to my local courts and requested an emergency restraining order slash PPO. The judge who was available to hear my emergency order request was, oddly, the same judge who was hearing the divorce. She evaluated the police report material I gave and granted the necessary emergency order after listening to the facts I presented. Doesn't exactly scream pro-revenge, does it well. My ex-wife was living in the guy's parents' basement with him. The judge's restraining order slash PPO shielded myself, my possessions, and my husband from him because we were still legally married. I was allowed to identify her as a protected party. He couldn't be within 600 feet of my, now ex-wife, when the restraining order was filed. He wasn't the one who had to go because she stayed with him in his parents' basement. She was, but she didn't have my car anymore. She was fired from her brand new job. She couldn't go to school, so she failed her college course, but she was still saddled with the student debts. She was now homeless, carless, unemployed, expelled out of college for non-attendance, impoverished due to her abysmal financial management skills, and, to make matters worse, she was almost four months pregnant with this child. What is the story's moral? Don't irritate a lespian veteran. I don't enjoy FC King FC King playing games. I will go to great lengths to avoid playing FCK FCK games. I'll bend over backwards to avoid having to play FCK FCK games. But if you compel me to play the aforementioned FCK FCK games, I will not be the one who loses, which is exactly what I told her on our third or fourth date. She must have forgotten. Lol. I was too lazy to read. Ex-wife attempted to use the legal system to play them FCK FCK games. She ended herself homeless, unemployed, carless, expelled from school, and pregnant with her boyfriend's kid. Note, if you wish to utilize the account of my experiences for any reason, you are allowed to do so. Wow. Edit 1. Edit 2. For those who are worried about the ex's pregnancy and kid, please know that I was unaware she was pregnant at the time. To the best of my knowledge, she was able to return to her native state, where we were living with her mother, bringing up the kid to the best of her ability. I've heard she has three children from three different husbands, so, her whole, a male lesbian, and a male lesbian, and a male lesbian, and in, yes, I married a woman, but was it just for show? For the sake of social justice? I'm not sure. It's not even worth my time to consider.